I recently spoke with Jake Glanville of Distributed Bio. If you've seen Pandemic, you'll recognize him. He and his team are developing antibodies against the coronavirus right now. I asked him about that work and what we can all expect in the weeks and months ahead. We're working with other groups. There are multiple groups that, that DARPA um, recruited to try to see who can like test the new arms race of how fast we can make an antibody to go block and neutralize the virus. And we actually know a lot about coronaviruses from MERS and SARS. And uh, a bunch of the common cold is caused by a very diff distant form of coronavirus. And then chickens get coronavirus. So tell me, what's the good news? What's the bad news? The classic problem here is that Anytime there's an outbreak, the amount of time it takes to go produce a medicine is too long compared to the time of the outbreak. So right now, there's kind of three tiers in my mind of, of medicines that could help. The, the best one are the, uh, are the classes of medicines that may already exist that we don't just know yet could work on the new coronavirus. So if that stuff works, that's the fastest. That would be outrageously great. If not, I'm... I'm on a follow-on, I think the vaccines end up, can, could end up working. That would also be great. I'm working on rapidly producing antibodies. My technique, if it works, should be the fastest method, but there are other groups also. So I think we have many different follow-on techniques to produce a medicine. That's the good news. The bad news is that this thing is super infectious. Uh, people can carry it around for uh, two weeks without showing symptoms uh, or with minimal symptoms, and they can be contagious during that period. And in some cases, it can be as much as four weeks slow burn, long infection, hard to stop, infects other species. These are all the bad things, right? The reason we were able to stop SARS and MERS was that they, they, you could burn them out quick. This thing is a long fuse, and so lots of other people are going to become infected. So looking ahead, I think you and I understand that you know we're on the precipice of something right now, to say the least. So what do you think the next few weeks are going to look like? It's going to be rough. Yeah, so today, for instance, like yesterday they canceled... Uh, pilgrimages to Mecca. Um, and for the next few weeks, they're going to wait on it, but they're going to cancel the, the Olympics. That would be my, my strong guess. If I were to uh, estimate over the next four weeks, I think what we're seeing is a uh, massive outbreak in Europe, uh, outbreak in the, across the United States. It is likely that our community exposure is much worse than we think it is in the United States. And that means that we're going to start having uh, our real indicator is not going to be positive tests. It's going to be ICUs overfilling. And that, that's not a good good thing to have. Um, I don't want to panic anyone. The, ultimately, this is like a kind of like a very bad flu season. It, it's not good for old people, uh, people with existing medical conditions. The good news is that children zero to nine are largely spared from the disease. Um, and it really is only a few percentage of the population that is extremely high risk. Although that said, it's about, you know, one in five people where this is a severe disease that could involve going to the ICU. And that, that's dangerous for countries that don't have good medical support. Because if you're in an ICU, that's bad enough. But if you can't get into an ICU, then your, your rate of, of risk of death goes up. And, and the developing world is uh, extremely poorly set up to handle um, handle this disease. So I think it's fair to say that we're going to have a higher mortality rate in those countries. The positive results so far is that it appears that there's been a slowing rate of growth of cases in China. But that's the good news. The bad news is that all the neighboring states to China are starting to get heavily infected, and those are going to be continuous outbreaks. And, and, and we're clearly vulnerable to local political decisions on how effectively those get suppressed. Th those are my my assessments now, I think it's it's fair to assume over the next month that we're going to have significant global outbreak in, in most, most areas of the world. I want to know a little bit more about the science behind what you and your team are doing. We're using bioengineering to repurpose 18-year-old antibodies against SARS that were very well studied to adapt them to recognize the new virus. I looked back to the research done almost 20 years ago against SARS. And it took them a couple years to go identify antibodies. So it was like too late to help with SARS, but they spent a bunch of time. They did all this research on these antibodies against a virus that was no longer relevant. But the cool thing is that the new virus has evolved since then. And I have a technology that can take those old, almost 20-year-old antibodies, and I can try to evolve them to catch up to the new virus. 
And that means that those old antibodies from, from 2002, I can repurpose using a technology I call Tumblr. The antibodies can, can recognize that still because there's enough of it there. That's right. They're basically, the things changed a bit and I'm shuffling it to catch up. So the virus evolved. Now I'm evolving the antibody back. And the really cool thing about this is that we already know those are neutralizers of SARS. If we can just adjust them to bind to the new virus, they're going to also be neutralizers of the new virus. And that, that saves you six months of research. And so that actually could make a medicine that could be deployed in time to actually help people in this outbreak. The major caveat I will say is that we're trying five different antibodies. So my whole strategy and all my research is you want to cross a river, you, you build multiple bridges. So I'm trying five different, different antibodies. They bind slightly different parts of the virus. And it's my you know, gambler's luck that one, at least one of those five is going to make it through and work. And I built this cool computationally optimized technology called Tumblr that really helps us mutate billions of versions of each one of those antibodies. So I'm really throwing like five billion spaghettis against the wall and hoping something sticks. That is one messy wall of spaghetti. <laughs> That's, the hope is a bunch of stuff sticks and we're in a really good position. I will be more interesting once I know whether the thing we're doing works. If it works, I'm going to want to talk about it. Yeah, I I, I'm going to want to talk to you about it either way. Yeah, yeah so I'm still, <laughs> I'm still, it could still definitely shit the bed, but I've got five different antibodies. They hit five different surfaces. I'm actually going to email this thing to you because it's fucking cool. Cool. I'm looking forward to it.